Okay, so I took one of the worst EA games ever released and installed 150 mods to fix it. I modernized its combat, improved character design, added new weapons, armors and clothes, I overhauled its graphics, tweaked gameplay, reworked UI, removed garbage cringe content. Basically, I did a lot. Enjoy. I have to say one thing before I start. The only way I can enjoy this game is by removing Mass Effect from its title and by transforming it into a first-person game. So here is first-person tackle. This allows you to play Andromeda in first-person and it actually blows my mind how well this game works this way. Now you can explore planets from a new perspective, fight enemies up close and personal, or admire a curvy flower pot on the Tempest. Even though the game was not intended to be an FPS, gun mechanics feel insanely smooth and crisp. And using biotics can make you feel like an absolute badass. Additionally, if you assign a keybind, you can toggle between third and third person camera on the push of a button, which is super convenient and can make you feel really immersed. Speaking of immersion, I think that environment in this game is really beautiful. Whether you try to survive wildlife on Havarl, or admire toxic legs on Kadara. That is, up until you meet the first character. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with... Everything. Yeah, we're fixing that. Project Pretty. This is the biggest texture overhaul mod for Andromeda, and it replaces face and body textures of nearly every single human NPC. Whether it is a secondary NPC or a Tempest crew member, this mod covers them all. It also improves face textures of squad members like Korra and Liam, it makes Kat more hostile and intimidating, and Olengara have a little bit more friendly look now. It doesn't fix ugly Turians though, so you need Turians Restored mod. Basically, this mod improves the appearance of all Turians in the game. Now they have more detailed darker complexions and they look similar to how they are portrayed in Legendary Edition. And since I'm covering character retexture mods, Asari also needs a serious overhaul. Base Asari Tweak improves Asari face textures, making Asari look younger and more beautiful. Asari Tweaks adds unique face tattoos to important Asari figures like Carrie or Sarissa. And PB Tweak removes that ugly black paint tattoo from PB's face. I don't know if you noticed, but I used my custom reshade preset to make this video. It makes color balance a little bit more vivid, and light sources now emit lights. It also adds a little bit more bloom and ambient occlusion to make the game feel more cinematic. If you want it, you can download it on next mods. Link is in the description. After playing this game for unhealthy amount of time, I came to a conclusion that some gameplay mechanics must be changed. Nomad ND2. This greatly improves Nomad by increasing its top speed by around 20% making the vehicle have more responsive steering, and increasing rear and vertical thrusters capacity so you can get some insane airtime. By the way, did you know that you can turn Nomad's lights on by pushing B? Wouldn't it be cool if Ryder could do the same? Light switch. This allows you to toggle flashlight on and off on the push of a button. I always combine it with <laughs> that, as it makes flashlights a little bit less intensive so you don't accidentally blind yourself if you turn the flashlight on when facing the camera. Hey, you. You're finally awake. Since Andromeda was abandoned by Bioware, it came down to modders to fix the game, and this is exactly what Mass Effect Andromeda Fix Pack does. This artificial patch addresses many prevalent issues that Andromeda had. Whether it was a backed quest, journal entry, conversation or game mechanic, this mod fixes them all. Remember those doors in Kadara that took like 10 seconds to open? Not anymore. With faster Kadara doors, you can open them instantly. And since I've mentioned a mod that saves you from wasting time, you may as well install shorter landing and departure cinematics, which makes Tempest landing and taking off animations last around 2 seconds. This is crucial in Andromeda, since a lot of missions in this game require you to travel across different planets, so with this mod you can save ridiculous amount of time. It's best to combine it with Lil Tweaks mod, as it silences Kalo and Suvi dialogue lines during those shortened cinematics. I also use this mod to remove cringe content from the game, like certain NPCs, or audio files. I despise minigames in Andromeda, so Glyphs to Numbers is an always install mod for me. 
Basically, it changes glyphs to actual numbers so you can solve Sudoku puzzles without having to waste dozens of minutes on this in-game activity. Quick loot. In Andromeda, just like in Mass Effect 1, whenever you pick up anything, this menu pops up. It gets really annoying over time. With Quick Loot, this menu disappears so all gear goes straight into your inventory. Although the menu will reappear when your inventory is full. And better quantity selection screen. This adds a new selection screen to the shopping menu so you can quickly input multi-digit values. I probably don't have to say how convenient this is. I think that UI is the most overlooked aspect of games these days. A well-designed, simplistic user interface can influence the way players explore the game or complete missions. Sadly, Andromeda has the opposite. Its user interface is cluttered with unnecessary icons, prompts, text, in my opinion all constantly spoiling the game and destroying the purpose of exploring the world that developers have created. I picked 4 mods to change that. HUD Overhaul It does 3 things. It replaces the overcluttered compass at the top of the screen with more simplistic and easier to read version. It swaps all map icons with smaller and more distinctive variants. And it removes all those icons from the compass and makes them active prompts on the side of the screen instead. Hat Player This removes weapon icons, special ability icons and squad member pictures from appearing on the screen. They are completely unnecessary since you can just tap V to quickly check what active loadout you have equipped. And for Nomad UI I used Reduced Nomad Hat. It removes all unnecessary prompts while keeping the necessary ones on the screen. It also makes mining UI much cleaner and easier to read. And finally, minimal targeting HUD. It does a lot of small changes to the UI like repositioning or hiding certain prompts, hiding enemy names, making reticle much smaller or hiding interaction text when approaching objects or NPCs. The mod is fully customizable, so if you don't like certain features, you can opt to not install them, since its auto camo has made a collection of all alternative patches. In my opinion, Andromeda has the best combat of all Mass Effect games. Stay focused! We're almost through! But being best doesn't mean it can be better, especially considering the fact that the gameplay was never properly balanced. I'll start with replace profiles with classes. This mod brings OG class system back. Instead of vanilla combat biotic tech trees, this mod creates custom sets of powers and special abilities unique for each class. Here's an example. As a vanguard, you will only have access to certain combat and biotic abilities. While vanilla allows for more gameplay freedom, I think this mod brings more role-playing aspects to the game. It's best to use it with power overhaul. This huge mod tweaks all special powers in the game. All abilities are now overhauled and they have more distinctive attributes as you level them up. They deal more or less damage, they have different damage bonuses or they are reworked from the ground up. This mod also adds 7 new abilities, including Snap Reads, Fortify, Shield Boost and Stealth Grid. Squadmates abilities are balanced as well, so they can be more productive during fights, but they are still weaker than Rider. And now you can upgrade all of their abilities without having to complete their respective loyalty missions. Powers Pack This mod adds 4 new active and 3 new passive abilities. For example, it restores Flair from original trilogy, which now has 3 stages. In stage 1, it's just a fast projectile, in stage 2, it's a much slower projectile that also explodes on impact, and in stage 3, it additionally detonates its own biotic combo. By the way, wouldn't it be cool if you could become a biotic powerful enough to not need any weapons? If yes, then check out Unyielding Ascension. It removes abilities cooldown and allows Rider to spend shields to use all offensive active biotic powers. It does make you a little bit overpowered, so you need better enemy health scaling. In vanilla, the game is very difficult in very early stages of the game, and then difficulty level significantly drops off at around level 30. With this mod, enemy health scales up more consistently, so enemies remain tougher to kill up until level 85. It works best with weapon overhaul, which nicely balances the weapons. In short, it reduces the amount of overpowered weapons in the game, and nicely boosts underpowered weaponry, so there is many more useful weapons to find at higher character level. I combine it with no auto reload, which forces you to press reload button to reload any gun, increased weapons range so you can kill enemies from far away, no scope no problem as it removes 50% damage penalty when no scoping enemies with sniper rifles, assault rifles and pistol scopes redone which removes scope zoom in effect when you equip scope attachment for assault rifles and pistols, and finally ground sight firepower pack. This mod ports 5 multiplayer weapons into the single player and it adds 4 completely new weapons like this M28 Pilgrim or this original trilogy inspired M7 Lancer. 
It also adds new weapon mods, weapon armor augmentations, consumables, new armor and new helmets, and 4 casual outfits that you can buy on Nexus so you can personalize your rider a little bit more. And about personalization, I think Andromeda took a path in the right direction in this regard. <sighs> Okay, maybe not the best direction, but the core foundation is there and it only needs some tweaks to make it great, so you can turn this rider into that one. Let's start with Ant Hairstyles, as it adds plenty of new hairstyles to the game. Just apply the mod, select new hairstyle, and your rider's look will improve by 100%. I think it's one of my favorite mods for this game. Clear Eyes this changes vanilla eyes to gorgeous looking handmade ones. It covers all humanoid NPCs. Just compare before and after. I've already mentioned Project Pretty as it improves all face textures in the game, but if you want to have a really unique rider, I recommend installing Femshapping's tattoos. This mod has 4 different body tattoos for Star Rider. And for face tattoos, I use new male and new female tattoos mods. They replaced ugly vanilla tattoos with much subtler, better looking and more realistic ones. Also, check out Human Makeup mod made by the same Atza. This replaces human makeup with something that is more realistic and ladylike. Have a look at some of the available options. And to wrap it up, here are some mods to give Ryder more clothes. Rider's wardrobe overhaul has many clothing options for both female and male riders, including new dress, jacket outfit, sporty outfit and so on. A sari under armor gives Star Rider an Asari suit to wear. And male rider casual clothes swap gives Scott Rider four new outfits to wear, including my favorite semi-armor one. And that is it. I shared my favorite mods that improve Andromeda combats, mechanics and graphics. And between you and me, I don't think that any amount of mods can fix this game. The main story and the alien basketball hoop villain really drags the game down. But if you want to try those mods for yourself and don't know where to start, I've made a Frosty collection on Nexus. Link is in the description. Bye!